Okay, so here we are. Um, we're going to practice some Excel trickery. Um, so first things first, let's look at some calculations. Um, so in my calculations tab, um, I've got some kind of empty numbers. I'm going to fill those in. So the first thing I want to look at is the total. So all these keywords that I've got in the sheet here are all the keywords in a campaign. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of kind of data that um, has been accrued by them. Uh, and I want to know what are the totals. So um, probably one of the simplest Excel functions is called sum. And that allows you to just add up chunks of data. So if I want to add up the total clicks, um, I can just start my sum function. I'm going to the keywords column and I can just highlight everything in the clicks column and that should give me the total number of clicks. Um, I'm going to do the same for the impressions column. I'm just going to write sum again, set the formula, go into the keyword sheet and highlight everything in the impressions column. And then if I want to know the total click-through rate, um, it's going to be slightly different because these are all percentages. So I can't just go around adding up all the percentages because that would be nonsense. And you also can't really average percentages because that doesn't make sense either. Um, but as you might remember, to calculate total click-through rate, I can just calculate it using the, um, the kind of equation, which is clicks divided by impressions. So that gives us 35% click rate, which is very strong. Um, and part of the reason it's so strong is because these are all exact match keywords. Um, as you might remember, broad match keywords tend to have a bit of a worse click rate than exact match because they can match to kind of random searches, but exact match keywords tend to have quite a decent click rate. Um, so that's my total kind of data for that campaign. However, I've got lots of ad groups within that campaign, and maybe I actually want to know how much each individual ad group is costing me um, and how much revenue and ROAS those ad groups are kind of getting. Um, so essentially to do that, I want to do lots of little sum calculations, uh, but I don't want to have to type them all in and split them, it's got to take ages. Um, so I use a function called a sum if, which is really nice because it says, um, you know, sum the column, just like this one does, but sum the column if, um, another column contains this value, for instance. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So as before, start writing equals because we're writing the formula, and start writing sum, and it's going to suggest sum f. So my sum f has three kind of criteria, and it kind of walks you through how they work. So the first one is the range. So what the range means is like which thing you want me to look at to find, it's going to ask for the criteria in it. So this is the criteria. So what is it looking in first? So if I go back to my keyword sheet, the ad groups column is the criteria. Uh, sorry, it's the range. So that's the range that it's going to be looking in. And if I press a comma, that means that I'm kind of moving on to the next bit of the formula. And you'll see it's got commas right in here. So it tells you how to kind of structure your formula. So the next thing is the criteria. Uh, and the criteria is literally this ad group name. So it's saying, look in that range I selected, and if you find any of these values, then we've got our final thing, which is the sum range. So I'm going to do another comma to move on to that bit. And because I'm looking at cost here, uh, the sum range is the cost column. Uh, so it's saying, look in this column C. If any of these values correspond to the criteria we've given it, then add up everything in this column J. Uh, so I'm just going to press Enter, and that completes my formula. Um, so once I've got that, I can just copy it down and I can see how much each individual ad group has spent. Um, and I might just check um, just to make sure that this value is correct. Um, I've done it all the time, so I'm pretty sure, but uh, let's just make sure. So let's check out this ticket, no service fee, exact ad group. So I'm going to sort the ad groups by name so that I can make sure I'm kind of grouping them together. Um, and it was ticket, no service fee, exact. So all I need to do is um, find the cost column, which was column J, um, and ticket, no service fee. It's going to be 
all these ones here. And you'll notice in the bottom corner, Excel will always give you kind of the sums of things. So 92.52, let's just check back here, 92.52. Okay, so I'm happy that my summer has worked correctly. Um, so now I can do the same thing with revenue. Uh, so let's do it again. Let's so equal summer. Um, so my range, again, is going to be the ad group column. Um, my criteria is again going to be this ad group name. Um, but the range that I want to sum is this time going to be my revenue range, uh, which in AdWords they call it conversion value. So I'm going to be summing this all conversion value column. Okay, uh, I'm just going to drag that down. And because this revenue column is supposed to be dollars, I'm just going to format it like that so it kind of looks nice. Um, it's all about trying to make things look nice and fast. Um, next, I've got the RAS column. And as you might remember, calculating RAS is simply revenue divided by cost. Um, so some of these are running with a pretty decent RAS. Some of them haven't had any conversions, but then they haven't really had that much cost either. Um, and RAS is typically displayed as a whole number. I can use these arrows here to kind of move the decimal places around. So I'm just going to move them back. So we go into a RAS of one decimal place. Um, generally, I don't need to get too specific on RAS. Um, so that's a nice way of just being able to kind of go, OK, which ad groups are doing well? Um, I mean, this ad group is doing pretty good, but it's only actually spent $8. So yeah, it's got a really good RAS, but it's not spent that much. Um, this guy, on the other hand, spent 175 bucks and at a RAS of 17.5, which is amazing. Um, and in fact, this one spent 460 bucks at RAS of 14.5, which is still pretty awesome. So we're making good money here. Um, and I guess one last thing I might want to do is think about you know how many keywords are in each ad group. So um, I'm not exactly sure when you might want to do this. Um, quite often I use this for like ads. So often it's good to have more than two ads, but not more than four ads in an ad group. Um, so sometimes I'll just want to go in and check how many ads are in an ad group. Um, in this instance, I'm going to be checking how many keywords are in an ad group. Um, maybe we can get some insights into like ad groups with more keywords perform better or perform worse or whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, and so calculating the number of keywords in an ad group, again, rather than going through and like adding these all up individually, which would take ages, um, I can just do something called count if. So it's functions much like a sum if, um, but it's called count if. So with the count if, again, I've got my range. So I'm going to be doing it on the ad group column again. So I'm going to be saying this range, which is the ad group column, contains the criteria of this ad group name. It's literally just going to count how many rows are in there, because each row corresponds to a keyword. So it's really easy to just say, OK, this is how many keywords each ad group has in it. So maybe somewhat unsurprisingly, the key, the ad group with the most keywords has spent the most money. Um, however, the next biggest ad group is this one with 25 keywords, and that hasn't actually spent that much. So I'm not sure we're getting that many insights from this. Um, you know, it's not necess It's not usually the number of keywords in ad groups that kind of denotes how much it's going to spend. It's more what keywords there are. Um, but anyway, there's some kind of summing type things. Um, and finally, I want to look at some VLOOKUPs. Um, VLOOKUPs are incredibly useful for digital marketing. They speed up a lot of processes so much. So um, definitely to be useful. So in this example, I'm assuming the client has given me this list of um, ad groups with the corresponding URLs. So some of the ad groups are just landing on the Stuff Up homepage. Some they want me to land on the sports page, and some they want to land on the concert page. Now, I guess I could technically do this manually by, um, you know, just copying and pasting and copying things down, but that is going to take ages and be super annoying. Um, so this is where a VLOOKUP comes in. Um, I'm just going to insert a new column here, and I'm going to call this the final URL column. And this is where I'm going to want to put my URLs. 
So um, my VLOOKUP is going to be super useful to me because I'm basically going to say, you know, these ad groups are all corresponding to the same ad groups here. I basically just want it to find what's the value of the next column along to this ad group. So um, I can just start typing VLOOKUP. And again, my lookup value is going to be on ad group name. So, you know, you can see again with the formula, it kind of spells out what needs to be in the formula. So the lookup value is going to be the ad group. And then I'm going to do a comma. Uh, and the table array means like which table do you want me to look in um, to find these new values. So my table array is this one. You'll notice again that I'm using columns rather than just selecting the table of data. Um, it's generally just a really good idea to do columns rather than tables because sometimes when you start copying things down, um, it can move the kind of table that's selecting as well. So generally, I always use, formats, uh, use columns. Um, so that's that selected, so I'm pressing comma. Um, and then the next thing it's asking for is the column index number. Um, that literally just means like how many columns across you want me to look. So if I was selecting a bigger table of data, I might be telling it to look across like five or six columns. In this instance, I'm going across two columns. So I know you might think that, you know, we're looking up this one and we're going one across, but that's not how it works. Um, the column uh, or the column index number is the total number of columns that we're looking at. So in this instance, it's two columns. So just press number two and a comma. And then the last thing is the range lookup. Now, nobody knows what this does, but all everyone knows is that it is zero. Um, so always going to have the range lookup as zero. So if I press enter, that has completed the formula. And I'm just going to copy this down in the bottom right corner. And that just magically put in different URLs for different ad groups. So uh, my event tickets and my resale tickets is put concert tickets as the URL. Let's just check what the tickets is, resale and events, yeah. Um, and sports, ad group seems to go into sports URL, and everything else is going to stuff. So um, that was a super easy way of just filling in all the funny URLs rather than doing lots of annoying copying and pasting. Um, so there you go.